Well, I am super excited to have a special friend and a colleague in the studio with me today. This is not the first time Jim has been with us. He is amazing. Jim Quick, you all know him. I'm pretty certain if you don't, you definitely need to know Jim. Jim is amazing. Jim has such a great story and has the most wonderful insight into how we can change our brain with our mind and has written an amazing New York Times bestseller. Jim, when I interviewed you in 2020, your book had just come out and you were on the on the interview with me. And as you were on the interview with me, you got the, the yeah. ping that you'd hit New York Times bestseller. So I was privileged yeah. to celebrate that with you. So welcome yes. back. Congratulations. And it's so lovely having you back on the show again. Oh, so good to be here. I want to thank you and, and big fan of your work and, and follower and we were always sharing and, and thank you everyone who's tuning in for this uh, very mindful conversation. We always do have a great mindful conversation. We definitely have share a lot of the same areas of interest. And, you know, with your background with traumatic brain injury experience and mine is in training, we had a lot to talk about in the previous interview. So I encourage everyone mm. to go back and re-listen to that and all of Jim. If you haven't followed Jim already, you should and get his book. And today I'm super excited because you've brought out an extended version of your book yeah. and it's beautiful. And I had so much fun doing your little, um, the brain code and oh, yeah, my, yeah. your quick, and I've got it in front of me here. My quick brain code mm -hmm. is I'm a dolphin, Jim. So yes. I'm, not even, I'm not even surprised. <laughs> um, we can talk about that also as well. I'd love to talk about but, that. I'd love to talk about that. So we, yeah. uh, so for those, can you just begin by telling people what the a little bit, little bit about yourself, and then just about your Limitless book, and then we'll dive into the extension yeah. of Limitless because this is an extended version, and you've added some amazing stuff to it. Yes, 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 uh, yeah. So much because the world has changed, and also my world has changed, and we'll talk about the uh, this new version. So uh, if I if I'm new to listeners right now, and uh, I have this this little guy here sitting on my desk. <laughs> Brain. I love and uh, if you happen to be watching this on video, uh, yeah, I have a we have a one of the things that changed for me is we have a ten month old, and uh, he loves playing with with Brainy, and oh, uh, it so really pleased. doubled. Thank you. Uh, it really doubled my conviction in helping and getting the word out, uh, especially for the next generation so they could be prepared in this post-pandemic AI world. So the external world has changed a lot, but my internal world, I turned 50, and we had our first child, and and it's really, yes, it's made me reflect and do a lot of introspection. That's why I updated this book, so people could uh, have even more resources and tools to have a better brain, focus and read faster, improve their memory, but so much more beyond. But yes, my, my inspiration was my desperation. As you know, I, I had a traumatic brain injury when I was five years old, and because of it, I had sensory issues, I had processing issues, poor focus, poor memory. I would have these daily migraines as a child, five, six, mm -hmm. seven, eight. It was just all the time. I would get disoriented a lot. So I wasn't really great at sports and um, it took me three years longer to learn how to read. I remember when I was slowing down a class and I was being teased for mm -hmm. it and the teacher came to my defense and she said, leave that kid alone in front of the whole class. She said, leave that kid alone. That's the boy with the broken brain. Oh my gosh. And those, um, I know she was good intentioned, <sighs> but that's, you know, adults have to be very careful with what their they external say. words because they often become a child's internal words. So every time I wasn't picked for sports, because I had these kind of coordination issues, I can balance issues. I would say, oh, cause I had the broken brain every time I did badly in school. Cause I couldn't read or write. Uh, I would say, oh, cause I have the broken brain that became my that label became my limit. Wow. And um, throughout school, this wasn't just a couple of years in school. This was all through elementary school and grades, um, middle school, junior high, all through high school. I would work because I come from immigrant parents that really, they were very hardworking. I would work two or three times harder at school, but I just wouldn't, I was I almost failed high school English numerous times. It was just really hard. Mm -hmm. We lived in the back of a laundromat that my mom was working at. And it was just, and it's interesting because my, mm. the things I was most embarrassed about, you know, I'm most proud of today. I believe that through struggles, we get strength. And I don't know one strong person that had an easy life or an easy past. No. Um, yeah. So when I was 18, I found a mentor and came across some new new information about how the brain works. And I started becoming curious about how does my brain work so I could work my brain better. I discovered this area of study uh, called meta-learning, 
which is the science and art of learning how to learn. I always thought it was interesting in school. They would teach you things like what to learn, math and history, mm -hmm. science, maybe some Spanish, but there were no classes on how to learn these subjects. And uh, but there's no class called focus or concentration or mindfulness or you know memory, right? And when you go to exactly. a child and say focus or study, it's like going to a child and say, play the didgeridoo or play the ukulele, yeah. who's never had any training or teaching on how to do that. And um, so I dedicated my life to two areas, really on uh, brain health and optimization, because you need to take care of that hardware, that mm -hmm. three pound matter between our ears that doesn't come with an owner's manual and it's not always user friendly. And then also this science of accelerated learning. I think one of the most important skills today amongst many is our ability to learn rapidly and translate that learning into action. It's an incredible mm -hmm. advantage in our career as parents, as um, just as human beings. If nowadays it feels like you're taking a sip of water out of a fire hose. A lot of people yeah. buy books and they, they sit on your shelf unread and mm -hmm. become shelf help, not self-help. So <laughs> I just feel like the that our listeners here today would have more productivity and performance, more profitability, and certainly more peace of mind if they could realize that they're, they're, they're the pilot of their mind. They don't mm. have to be the passenger, right? Sometimes mm. we're at the effect because we're overloaded or distracted and lots of shiny objects, uh, AI, um, everything going on with the world right now. And there's a quote in the book, Limitless, that says, life is the letter C between B and D. Or B is birth and D is death, life, C, choice. Beautiful. And our lives are the sum total of the choices we've made up to this point. And I believe these difficult times, they could distract us. These difficult times, they could maybe even diminish us. Or these difficult times, they could develop us. We we decide. And, and that, that's really what the book is about, taking people into a journey um, the mind and the brain and giving them tactics and tools to be able to focus, to get into flow, to change their habits, to read faster, to remember languages or names and faces or client information with greater ease and enjoyment. And really going from the boy with the broken brain to now having students in every country in the world. This is, uh, I've been doing this for 32 years it's my mission to build better, brighter brains. No, no brain left behind. It is just beautiful. First of all, congratulations on your 50th birthday. I turned 60, so I've got 10 years on you, Jim. <laughs> and your baby and, no, and your work. And it's it just, you know, I get so much, every time I talk to you, I get shivers down my spine because what you've achieved and how you've taken, you know, that what you've gone through to help others is so great. You know, we talk so much about purpose, but purpose is what you do that, it actually changes what other people do with their lives. So it's what you do in other people and how they can use what you've taught them. And that is what you've done. You've taken all these principles and I understand so deeply your drive and your 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 desperation to get this to the world and the brilliant way that you're doing it because of being in the field that I am and having worked in this year's thousands yes, of people yes. in education and TBI and everything. So thank you, first of all, for what you do and for the simple way that you teach something that people, it's work. It's work to get your brain healthy. It's work to get your mind, yeah. and it's, your, it's your mind works. Your mind's got to work hard to get your brain in a healthy state and learning and memory and with a quick fix mentality, it's, on, it's not easy, but you've right. managed to capture that and help people. So thank you for your fantastic work. I'm thrilled and it just it's an honor to see how you've taken the you really are neuroplasticity um you you show the evidence of directed neuroplasticity as you know i did some of the first work on neuroplasticity yeah. back in the 80s but you show that when you our brains changing anyway you show that when you're determined to actually use your mind correctly you can drive neuroplasticity in any direction so as you so beautifully say you've gone from the broken brain and you healed that brain you you rewired your brain and now you help others do the same thing. So that's so incredible. So I'm thrilled about your extension on this book, this, this extended version, because you're tapping into all these very important things. I specifically love your chapter on AI, your um, the, 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 your brain code helping in the workplace, how things have changed in the workplace. And so where would you like to start? Because you also bring in a whole yeah. section on, 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 on food as well and the brain. Yeah, so, so, maybe so much more. All of those fall in the, the category of momentum. The first book really was about controlling the controllables that people 
Limitless is not about being perfect, right? There's no perfect, but it's, it is about progress. It's about advancing and progressing. So if somebody we can turn this into a little, uh, little workshop, if somebody feels like they're not progressing, they're like, they're stuck in a box. When you think about a box or a cube, it's three dimensional and there's three forces that limit us, that contain us. And these are the same forces that will liberate us. So in the original book, which is obviously part of the the, the new version, it's about your, about your mindset, about your motivation, about the, the methods you're using to get out of that box. The, 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 the new additions was really about momentum, which is the fourth M, because when you can unlimit your mindset, you can believe it's possible that you're capable of it, that you deserve it. When you can unlock new levels of motivation, purpose, and energy, and flow states, and small, simple steps, and your habits, when you could upgrade your learning or, you know, the chapters are on flow, on, on focus, on memory enhancement, on reading better, on critical thinking skills, then, you know, you have, you have an unbelievable amount of power that you could influence for the greater good and for your own benefit. I believe the faster you learn, the faster you could earn because knowledge today mm-hmm. is not only power, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's profit. You know, most of your listeners right now, they're not compensated like they we were hundreds of years ago, mm-hmm. where it's brute strength. Today, it's, it's really our brain strength. It's not our muscle power. It's really more our mind power. Mm-hmm. So it's meant to be an owner's manual for your brain to, to learn rapidly in a rapidly changing world. But the momentum is interesting because momentum is like when you escape the gravity well of like the Earth's orbit, and there's an ease, right? There's less friction. And there are certain accelerators for your velocity. And so you mentioned AI, and I always wanted, you know, that chapter is about how can AI enhance your HI, your human intelligence. And I look at it more as not artificial intelligence. I look at it as more augmented intelligence. Mm, What are the tools and tactics you could use AI to enhance uh, your knowledge, your skills, your abilities? You know, we mentioned uh, nootropics, and we talk about a few dozen that are of human studies and that could improve your mood, your mental energy, vitality, your focus, your memory. That could give you an, an advantage. We talk about learning agility. And we know that physical agility, if an athlete is physically agile, they're very quick, they can adapt, they're, they're nimble. Well, you could actually have more learning agility or mental agility in the workforce, especially if you're working hybrid, maybe partly remote or in person, and you need to switch tasks. And how do you do that without losing a lot of time or focus, uh, making mistakes? And then a new chapter, like another chapter on these, um, on the brain code. So we can start the brain code because that's really an interesting place to start. And so this was an inspiration. So we created an assessment that I've been using with coaching clients for years And for the very first time with this book, we're sharing it with the world. And I realized after a few decades of doing this as a teaching, as a learning coach, that it's not how smart someone is, it's how are they smart. It's not how smart your spouse is, it's how are they smart. Mm, Or your kids, it's how are they smart. Or your team, that everyone has a preferred way of learning and thinking and buying and communicating and parenting. And a lot has to do with what I call your brain animal. Because I associated certain animals that embody these traits. Because a lot of people like taking quizzes like which Game of Thrones or Harry Potter character <laughs> yeah. are you or fun things like that. Yeah. It only takes four minutes. It's multiple choice. It's very easy. And just like there's personalized medicine based on an assessment, mm-hmm like your genetics or personalized nutrition based on an assessment like your microbiome. This is a personalized learning and leadership living based on your, your brain animal. So you mentioned code and that's an acronym, C-O-D-E for the animals. I'll mm-hmm. go through them very quickly. And then I'll show you how you could use it to read faster to improve your memory because everybody has certain traits and strengths and certain um, areas where they're not as strong that uh, it's kind of like, if you're if a dominant hand, like maybe it's your right hand, doesn't mean you don't use your left hand. It's just things take a little longer with your left hand, maybe a little bit more uncomfortable, maybe more mistakes. It's kind of like when you're learning something with a non-dominant hand, it mm-hmm. takes longer or feels a little weird. And maybe it's just that your brain animal is different than the instructor's brain animal. And you're just kind of missing each other like two ships in the night. And you're not, there's no connection. You don't even mm-hmm. recognize the other ones there. So the C in code are your cheetahs and your cheetahs, the defining trait. And I pulled from my inspiration over years was 
personality types like Myers Briggs, mm -hmm. uh, introvert, extrovert, left brain, right brain, dominance theory, uh, visual auditory kinesthetic processing, multiple intelligence theory, Howard Gardner's work out of Harvard. And we synthesized it in, into one model. And just like every framework, it's it's a guide. It's like you hear this phrase where the the the, the menu is not the meal, right? The map mm -hmm. is not necessarily the territory, but it's a lens that gives you more power because you have distinctions. And so the C are your cheetahs. The defining trait is action. Cheetahs are very quick to implement. They have strong intuition. They have uh, they they thrive in fast paced environments because they adapt very quickly. The O in code are your owls, and your owls are, <clears throat> excuse me, are their defining trait is logic. They love data, they love facts, they love figures, and they love formulas. These are individuals that do their research, they're very studious. And again, we're not just one animal, but we do have a primary and a secondary mm -hmm. that kind of informs how we could go through the world learning and leading and living. The D are your dolphins, and they're they're really their defining trait is their creativity. I mean, they can see a vision for things that other people around them might not yet see, right? It's the, your J.K. Rawlings, who created Harry Potter, or your Walt Disney's, if you will. They have extremely uh, refined pattern recognition. So they're great problem solvers. They speak with a lot of passion because they're, they have this vision, this aspiring vision that they want to create. And then finally, the E are your elephants. And your elephant's defining trait is empathy. They have high levels of compassion, very strong interpersonal skills. They are core team builders and community builders. They are extremely loyal. They want people to feel seen. They want them to feel heard. And so that's a little bit of a summary. People could take the quiz. Uh, it's free, nothing to buy. It's at mybrainanimal.com. Mybrainanimal. We'll put the link you get in a the follow show notes. Up. Sorry, yes. we'll put the link Can in the show notes. Thank you. Thank you. And people will get their personalized learning journey based on their brain animal type on how they, because cheetahs read differently than owls where cheetahs skimming and scanning, they want to get through the information. Owls are taking their time because they're very deliberate because they are, they are looking and sorting by and filtering by, by what's correct, right? They're, they want to look at the facts and they want to do, they want to have a deep understanding of things. Uh, also our creative dolphins, they are visualizing when they're read and they see these pictures, right? A picture is worth a thousand words. Elephants who are highly empathetic, they're looking at the author's point of view and different uh, narratives and, and perceptual positions. They have high levels of empathy for the information and people who are creating it. And so it's interesting because an owl would invest differently than a cheetah. And an owl could also remember names using logic as opposed to a, a dolphin who could maybe visualize something like a mnemonic device. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's really wild. So as an example, we had our entire team take the assessment. And did you know all of our customer support team, maybe it's uh, 10 individuals, 100% of them are elephants. Wow. Because they're highly empathetic. They're community builders. They're there to support and hold, and their you know their their the their people they're serving. Their success is their is their success, right? They have their backs, and they're extremely loyal. Our CFO, our financial officer, is an owl, very mm -hmm. very strong owl. Loves those numbers, loves that data. Mm -hmm. Our my business partner, she is our CEO. She's 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 a dolphin. She leads has has that vision for where things are, go are going. So it's interesting because you also see this in, in pop culture. If you take something like one of the most famous sitcoms like Friends, mm -hmm. Ross would be an owl, scientist, a professor, does a lot of research, knows all the facts about everything. You would see Joey as uh, the cheetah, just very instinctual, very, very good, just out there taking action, not putting a lot of thought, but going by their intuition. Uh, you would look at Phoebe as the creative dolphin with the music and you know all the creative expression and then the passion she has for things. Um, Monica would be the one that wants to host everything, would be the elephant, the, the center of the community, holding the friends together. And so you'll see this in, in, in every form. You can do that for Star Trek or Harry mm -hmm. Potter. It just it kind of reveals itself. And people will find jobs and positions that they would be able to 
lean into their elements, lean into their strengths and, and their traits. It affects also their parenting style also as well. It affects how you negotiate because it's, people just like love languages tend to express in their love language, but that might not be their partner's love language and they might not feel seen or heard or validated, right? So once you know your, the, your family's brain animal or your team's brain animal, it would inform a lot of the communication, a lot of the coaching, um, and 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 so and so much more. Oh, I love that. So. I love the fact that you've your, your background, um, your research with Howard Gardner. Howard Gardner was doing his research parallel to when I was doing mine, and I developed a geodesic information processing theory. So it was very interesting at the same time. Mm. It's like all those years ago. But I love this. I love your code. It's so it was such fun doing it, and I'm getting my whole team to do it as well. So it, mm. it it's just great, and, the, and you give a great. Uh, you know, it, I got an email immediately giving me all this great information, learn how to utilize your strengths, learn better, be more productive, succeed more as a dolphin, et cetera. It was, it was beautiful. I, I think it's really great to help people build the community, that connection, that deep, meaningful connection that's since the, honestly, this kind of, this United States has become so individualistic and moved away from mm-hmm. community. So I almost see this as a kind of way of helping to build a little bit of a bridge back to the community aspect. Again, it's each of us play our role. We don't, not in competition, we in enhancement. Just a few of the little observations that I had when I read through and did the, yes. did the little code. And, because you're, you're, and you can appreciate this because you're, you're one of the foremost experts on neuroplasticity. Our brain animals could change over time based on novelty, based on yeah. learning. I mean, obviously people, if, if they're not strong in the owl, there are certain trainings that can make them more logical thinkers, right? And obviously we know a lot of the famous owls, like the Einsteins, the mm-hmm. Marie Curies, the Isaac Newtons, the Warren Buffetts, and the cheetahs, like the, the Richard Bransons, the Amelia Earharts, the mm-hmm. Steve Jobs, the Serena Williams, the, the dolphins. One of my favorite dolphins, Leon, that, my, that my son was named after, Leonardo da Vinci, right? J.K. Yeah. Rowling, Walt Disney. You have your your elephants like Mahatma Gandhi, mm. you have, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. You have uh, the Mother Teresas of the, of the world. But it's it's interesting Beautiful. that once people have a distinction, that gives them more power in a situation because they they could see the pattern and they could be able to have more options. And in game theory, the one that has and more distinctions and they can make different choices that other people really are just looking at something through like one hat or one lens. That's amazing because it also creates a lot of empathy and it creates a lot of listening and you know, people are going to listen. Takes away very much so. And it takes away the, the, the judgment we have over Love others that. because they're, they are, they, they are acting in accordance with their, their brain type. And it also takes away the, a little bit of the self judgment that we have when we're not naturally good at something. It doesn't mean we can't develop those areas, you know, of our life, but sometimes we're hard on ourselves because we're not like a different kind of person, but just knowing that genius expresses itself differently, uh, you know, based, based on our cognitive types um, amongst many other, and we even communicate differently like a cheetah who's just looking to act they're very, they communicate very direct mm. and decisive. They get straight to the point. Their speech is concise. Mm-hmm. It's, they're focused on action oriented words. They dislike beating around the bush, right? Because it wastes time. But an owl would communicate more in details. They communicate in a logical sequence. So also if you wanted to coach an owl or influence them to invest in your company or, or buy, then you know what their, what their brain animal type is, that they want facts and figures and data, right? A dolphin would communicate different. They would use a visionary words. They'd be very expressive. They would speak about the bigger picture, the future plans, mm-hmm. the innovative ideas. They would have an incredible amount of enthusiasm and passion around it. And elephants would be more communicative in empathy. They would be more collaborative. They are keen on understanding and validating the feelings and perspectives of others. They would be very team oriented mm. where instead of using words like I or my, they would use words like we and, and us. They're incredibly patient listeners because it takes time to listen and make sense of others. And they want them to feel heard. They want them to feel valued. They, they would try to get to a consensus. They're consensus seekers because communication often seeks to find their communication common ground, right? Even if it mm-hmm. takes a little bit more time. So recognizing and adapting to these communication styles can facilitate more effective um, interactions 
whether you're hiring or managing or parenting, it, it all it all has a play. So, like, there's a movie, The Matrix. Um, I love it. <laughs> you know, yes, yeah. if your listeners, but there's a point in the first one where Neo meets the Oracle for the very first time in her kitchen, and there's a sign above the door. I don't think a lot of people see it mm. or notice it. It says, "Know thyself," mm. and I feel like that's one of the reasons why we do the inner work. In the introspection, we go to therapy to get mm-hmm. to know ourselves. And part of knowing ourselves is um, is, to, is doing these kind of assessments to see, um, you know, where our strengths or our challenges are, um, our value system, our, our internal belief systems are, and then and then having the curiosity to know yourself, but then also the courage to be yourself too is a different game, how it plays out, you know, in the world. Oh, I love that. I'll have to relook at Matrix again and see if I can see that sign. Yeah. And I love Epicurus, who who also said, uh, um, he also spoke about the fact, know thyself as well, which is then, as we know, Aristotle also said it. And so, but it was just, it's such a important st- thing to understand, to know yourself. But when you know yourself in that way, like some of the, of your codes, they cross over, like as you're describing some of those other characteristics of the different four different animals, it's like all of those characteristics are in each animal. You said this already, but they just, bigger in there's just more focus on certain characteristics in your specific mm. type of animal so it's all you it's like you've taken some of the main human characteristics that enable us to live compassionate kind interactive yeah. supportive lives where we lift others up and not compete and cut each other down and you've kind of organize them into these animals. It's so good. It's really so good. You know, I'm, I've always been a little, I'll be honest with you, wary of, you know, the Myers Briggs, all those things because of my scientific mm-hmm. background and the science is not the greatest in, in all those personality profiles. But when I did yours, I just felt a sense of this is not a big, this is some, something simple and and, and yeah. it really does deliver a message. And it, it just is a very big eye opener to, hey, I can just look at myself differently, give myself more self-compassion and listen to others and tune into others. So it's, it's really great. I loved it, Jim. I thought it was a fantastic. And I can see the benefit in the workplace. You know, as you were describing everything, I'm already labeling my team members those. And I want to see when they fill in the code. I want to see which before before I'd say, ah, that's what I, when you were describing them, I want to see what I think they are is what it comes if they come out as that. So I'll let you know. <laughs> it's fascinating. Oh, That'll be yeah. Everyone can post uh, when they do it, you get this AI art and they could post it and tag us both. Cause I'm curious what a lot of your listeners are dominant. That'll be fun. Yeah, we'll yeah, do that yeah, for yeah. sure. When we post this, we'll yeah. definitely do that. We'll put a, we'll put a little link up and put your, what, what you are and I'll put what I am. And so that's, yes. yeah. And what are you? What are you? So from- me, I'm a primary and owl. Like I go a lot by, the, the, then, the research and the data, um, but then also I have very strong elephant tendencies, maybe because of my inspiration was my desperation and because I was marginalized and I was suffering, I could just sit even as a child in class watching everybody and I could feel their struggles. And hopefully it makes me a little bit of better of a coach so I could feel what it feels like to feel inefficient mm-hmm. or have a lot of self-doubt or struggle in a certain area. But I think my pain became more of my purpose because um, because I get really hypersensitive to people who mm. are going through challenging times, mm. and, but it, it's wonderful. But then, of course, I, I, I admire so many of the creative dolphins in my life, and the, uh, the those that also are the cheetahs that could just boom, 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 put everything into play and action. And, yeah. Um, but uh, so I like to learn from them also as well, and it's good to know that everybody could be our teacher because everybody has a different set of traits um, and experiences that we could learn from. And uh, yeah, I feel like it does create this, I would love to, for us, Dush, you know, collectively, I'm just not talking about just us, but it's every many people doing this kind of work, yeah. usher a new renaissance of, of, of the power of the mind oh, yeah. and what it can really do, because certainly there's enough suffering, but you know, even with AI, we still need to be curious and creative mm. and, and passionate and all these human traits that we could cultivate even more important than ever to be able to, to be able to, to really thrive in, in, in this world. Oh, I love that. You said a couple of things there that I want to emphasize. First of all, I'll start with what you ended off with. We To thrive in this world and to be more human, we need the qualities yeah. that you describe. And I think that's really what caught my attention because of the AI chapter as well, how you've focused on the humanness yes. and the beautiful human qualities and you know, we're not machines and all that kind of thing. And I also love the fact that you commented that you primarily are, uh, you primarily won and then you had another one. So you had two. So you're, you primarily, what did you say? You said you're the, the owl. Yeah. And no, the owl, owl and then and the, the secondary. 
was 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 more an elephant. Elephant, and okay. it, and the it, compassion. And we're all mixed. That's the thing. And, yeah, that that I like that mix. It was great because when you were saying about the, because I came out as a dolphin, but I was I'm also so research and numbers driven. So it's right, what's right, beautiful is you can play with those combinations and you can actually see yeah. your driving force. So then the, the secondary support ones or the two, you can even then find a little bit of each, but then you find your own uniqueness. So it's a lovely way of looking at uniqueness. Yeah. That's really, it's really very, cool. Very, much, very, yeah. very, very much so. I love it. Well, let, Jim, let's transition with that over to AI because I actually did an article for Time Magazine recently just on AI and people are so, you know, people are so frightened of it. You capture that essence in your book beautifully. But what mm-hmm. I have, your, what, what, what you have in your book, which I haven't seen in a lot of places, is instead of all the scary negative, it was a practical how it will keep your creativity at bay. So I've looked at AI very much from a scientific perspective and I follow certain and researchers who, and I can go into all the brain stuff. I mean, like really AI is looking at one neuron's firing capability and we have anywhere from 80 to 100 billion. So, and we don't even understand the capacity of two neurons firing. So we're still at the stage of one neuron and look at one, you know, that's, so there's, there's still the whole, all the, 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 inter, the, the multiplicity of neurons plus the interaction. And that's only on the outside. We haven't even looked at what's on the inside of a neuron, which is a whole point. It's a whole quantitative, I mean, a, a, a whole quantum world. And that's just numbers that go beyond. So when I, when people get frightened, I always say, hey, listen, we're only looking at one aspect that's really useful. And you've got all this other aspect that means that no two people's thoughts would ever be the same and you could never ever generate the singularity that is being proposed because there's just too much complexity in the human brain. I don't know if you've heard of Professor Henry Markram. He's also a South African like myself and he ran the Blue Brain Project for years and years ago and, and I'm leading up to a point because I want you to run, you know, just talk all about how you beautifully you've handled okay. AI. And he proposed, I think it was about 20 years ago that he said within 12 years we'll have, um, basically have a, a brain that represents Represents, can do what a human, the artificial brain that can represent what a human brain can do. And 20 years after that, after making that statement in a TED talk and obviously in papers and so on, he said, after 20 years, we've only actually, and I'm quoting him, um, so it's you know paraphrased, we've only actually managed to understand how one thought in a mouse brain kind of functions and that's and, a, and right. one thought you know that what how can it's it, it's infinite in other words our thought lives are infinite so now i've laid the foundation with our thought lives being infinite and our humanity being so um so much part of us that's so unique as humans which i love your little yes. you know, the brain code tells us you've got a very unique way of helping guide people through ai which i thought was really really excellent yeah so it's for me it's about a technology like any technology is just for me it's how it's applied right fire is an early form of technology and how it's applied it could cook your meal today yeah. or it could burn down your home it's just really how it's implemented and used similar to money um it can be an accelerator and but really the intentionality is so very important you know the human aspect my my focus in that chapter was really making it so simple mm. for everyday individuals to not be intimidated, but showing how a calculator or any form of technology in the internet, how it has enhanced our life. And so simple examples, I really focus on accelerated learning in Limitless Expanded. I think our ability to, to learn, to unlearn, to relearn, to translate that learning into action is an incredible competitive advantage. You could apply it towards medicine or marketing or money or martial arts or music. Mandarin, everything gets easier. You know, I wrote this book so it could be like the one book that help you read every other book, you know, because you'll Beautiful. learn how to get into flow states and remember and read better. So it's kind of like that lead domino and an owner's manual guide, if you will, for the most, you know, complex thing that's very practical and pragmatic. AI is I see the same way. So for instance, we mentioned neuroplasticity and I I imagine most of your listeners know what it is, but if they weren't sure, they could go into an AI platform. I love that little example. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I loved your little example that you gave that caught my attention very quickly. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 absolutely. I think that, so like if you come across something you want to learn, instead of being intimidated by it, people could go into a example, chat GPT and say, Explain to me, I heard about this term neuroplasticity, explain to me neuroplasticity uh, in story format as if I'm eight years old, right? 
And it gave, it gave you some kind of foundation because a lot of learning is taking something you don't yet know and, and connecting it to something you do know, mm -hmm. right? Something that's unknown outside of you, connecting it to something you already know. That's why metaphors and analogies and stories work so well uh, as a kind of a foundation. And then you could go into more micro and get those distinctions because obviously a metaphor or analogy or story is not the exact representation, just like the brain animals are an exact representation mm -hmm. of people's brains, but it gives you some distinctions that you might not have. For example, let's say uh, I, you know, I have a podcast as well. We've had you on our show. Yeah. Looking forward to having you back also Thank as well. Uh, and also, it's one of those things where maybe if I'm interviewing an expert <clears throat> and I don't have, maybe there's a shipping issue and I didn't get their book in time. I could go into an AI program and just say, "Hey, can you can you summarize this book for me?" Um, so that I have some base knowledge so I could you know, speak intelligently. Mm -hmm. Or I could say, this is my guest. Can you propose 10 questions that she hasn't been asked before that could really serve this community, right? And I'll explain what that community is. And not that you would take and copy and paste and use verbatim anything no, that but they would create, but it creates a creativity partner mm, for you. Yeah, a, a right? boost, like a little boost. Sorry, like a little boost. Right. It gives you some ideas to work from. Right. And it's kind of like, so AI, it's not so much artificial intelligence, but more augmented. It's kind of a support system. Like in our team, we happen to have a couple of people that I could just uh, be prolific with and and just kind of do a mind dump with, and they could take it and, and run with it and give me feedback. And AI does that you know, remarkably well, and it just gets even sharper. Right. So mm -hmm. it can provide questions in that conversation. Every strategy and limitless expanded from mind mapping to memory palaces to retrieval practice. You could utilize AI because AI could go through and propose questions to test your, your own knowledge and ability, you know, your knowledge distinctions, your sca mental scaffolding mm -hmm. about a subject to see where your blind spots are. Or it could give you space repetition or space interval learning where it quizzes you on a, on a certain interval to help consolidate short to long-term memory. There's a whole brain note-taking technique in there. One of them happens to be mind mapping by Tony Buzan. Mm -hmm. And you could go through a, something and you could ask AI to create the structure of a mind map for you. Or if you wanted to do something around, let's say, memory palaces, which we've talked about in previous episodes, where you take certain locations that you're familiar with and put key ideas and uh, place them in certain locations that you could easily remember, you could have them build you a memory or mind palace around a specific subject. So if you say, hey, this is the the toast I'm going to give at this wedding. Can you create a memory palace so I could more easily remember it or a nice story to help me create some kind of mental notes. Mm -hmm. So then when I present it, I could not be afraid that I'm going to forget what I need to say and so, or a Ted talk that you have to be able to, to give in AI programs. Also, we have our own quick bot in our platform. You know, we have students in every country in the world and we, fed this gym bot or this quick bot. I don't know what our team is calling it now, <laughs> but we fed it all of our courses and all, and all, all of the, the research that I've done and the distinctions that we've made. So it's there 24 seven. So if one of our students or maybe a parent wants to help their child memorize something and they're not in a place where they really know that subject matter, then they could feed it into this uh, AI bot and address it as if it's me and say, my child needs to memorize this formula or this periodic table or what have you. Can you create a fun, easy way to do that using, you know, your memory techniques and it'll be able to do that. Wow. So it's, it's one of those things that I'm, I'm really excited because the possibilities are indeed limitless and I don't want to rely completely on technology, just like we talked about in a previous episode where mm -hmm. digital distraction and digital dementia and digital deluge and digital deduction, we have to rely on technology to get us from here to there. And we don't have mm -hmm. develop our own visual spatial awareness or we, our phones carry all our phone numbers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't want to memorize 500 phone numbers, but because we're now become mentally fit in that area in terms of there's no such thing as a good or bad memory. There's a trained memory and untrained memory. Mm -hmm. It should be concerned we've lost the ability to remember one phone number or a PIN number or a passcode or a seed phrase or something we just read, mm -hmm. right? So I don't want to be so dependent on technology anymore than you're relying on technology if you have to go to the bank tomorrow 
and it's eight blocks away, yes, you could jump into a, a ride share or your car, or you can get your steps in, right? Mm-hmm. If you have your office on the third floor or your apartment's on the third floor, you could take a lift or an elevator. That's very convenient, but you know it's nice to get your exercise also. And so people constantly have to make the choices of, hey, am I going to go... F- is this going to be convenient, but also crippling, or am I going to be able to use this to be able to develop my creativity, my curiosity, my imagination, my memory, my focus, and so much more? So, you know, this AI bot that we're creating, it can measure mm-hmm. someone's reading speed. It could test them on the reading comprehension, right? It could, um, and so it's it's very measurable. Mm-hmm. The things that we teach. Um, and I'm just really excited about the possibilities of AI. I don't think AI is going to take away the jobs of people. I know they're really scared of that. I, but I do believe that people who are utilizing AI are more valuable in the most part in the marketplace than people who refuse to use it. Mm. Because it's, again, it's a tool that could give you a little bit of an advantage um, by synthesizing you know, the world's information that it has access to and, uh, you know, and so much more. I'm not going to ask AI to write my book, but it could help me organize my book right? Mm-hmm. Give me certain prompt questions. It could go field test and give, give me, you know, uh, probing questions of, of topics that are important in, in my marketplace or my community. And um, so I, th- I think it's a nice partner or support system like any technology. Oh, I, the way you've explained that's incredible because you've basically shown you, and you say this in the book as well, about how, yes, AI is getting more augmented. And I like that it's getting more augmented. Mm. But who's the ones doing the augmentation? It's still the humans. Yes. You know, it's still our creativity. And, you know, that's really what, what the scientists that are, are challenging this whole thing that AI is going to take over, you know, humanity and that kind of thing, be more intelligent than us. They're challenging the same thing. The same, someone's got to, you're giving it power, you're augmenting. Augmenting is not the same as creativity and you know you right. always need the person gate you know you've always got the the person so like you said you can ask you can ask AI to give you some probing questions and structural questions potentially for a book or do a survey or something to find what your listeners would mm-hmm. and your your fans would like you to write about but at the end of the day you're still going to filter that information because a lot of that information as we know from testing it is coming back inaccurate yes. and you know there's all Very much you've, so. so you can't just totally rely on that you've got to actually use that we also busy using um, developing an AI for for part of the research that we do doing like qualitative research mm. you have thousands of responses and you know you can and, and we have an app, the NeuroCycle app, where we can then feed, we can feed more supportive, interactive um, information yes. back in. But so that's using it to augment something that would take us time, but it's not overtaking. So I, it's brilliant. Your approach is, is brilliant of one of not having fear, but one of, hey, how can I use this augmentation to augmentate? augmentate isn't such a word augment my own creativity and that's really powerful yes. very very powerful so i love that very, very very much so so the ai just like when we're focusing on momentum because everybody wants mm-hmm. greater momentum in the new year part of it would be knowing yourself and your brain type because that could allow you to lean into your strengths and and build a team and around you that leans into theirs and could help accelerate momentum and AI could be a tool to spark creativity uh, and new ideas and, and do research for you and obviously spot check because there are a lot of false studies that it is yeah. quoting sometimes um, but it, it could, that could provide momentum another area that we talk about in the book for the first time actually in my you know, 30 year career is, uh, is supplementation. Mm. And it's, it's interesting because I'm, I always, my general, and I think for this kind of conversation, people should talk to their functional medicine doctor or their health practitioner, nutritionist, because everyone's bio individual and everybody, you know, what's good for somebody could be not so good for somebody else. But in, in the book, we reference all the, the, the human studies around certain supplements. And I would always prefer people get it from food because I'm kind of a foodie. And I also mm-hmm. know that sometimes the soil doesn't have those same nutrients as it did decades ago. And we also have a very fast you know, lifestyle and we're traveling and eating food out of like, who knows what kind of oils mm-hmm. that they're cooking with in the kitchen, all that stuff. But so, we, you know, in the previous episode, you and I talked about some of my favorite brain foods mm-hmm. that is, could potentially mitigate uh, stress, that could be neuroprotective. We have a whole new chapter in there on neuronutrition. And so one of them is like eggs. Uh, if people 
is that their diet allows the choline in eggs, a precursor for acetylcholine, very good for cognitive mm-hmm. health and performance. But you know, it's found in eggs, it's found in soybeans. And if maybe they don't have that in their their diet, maybe they want to supplement with 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 choline, which is a you know, again, critical component of acetylcholine, mm-hmm. a neurotransmitter that supports memory and cognitive function. Um, omega-3s, those are more not nootropics, but supplements. Mm-hmm. And if they're not getting it, especially particularly the DHA, mm-hmm. um, if they're not getting it from their their fatty fishes or some of their, or their flax seeds, maybe they need to supplement it. Uh, plays a key role in memory and overall brain function. And then even in doing a nutrient profile, because even lacking your vitamin Bs or your your D vitamins, mm-hmm. especially your vitamin D levels, could affect uh, your your brain health. Um, vitamin Bs it helps with the production of your brain chemicals that affect your mood so and you other can. you know chemicals and magnesium is, is, is core for, you know, hundreds of physiological yeah. uh, tra- uh, functions, you know, in the, in the body. And then when we talk about things like, uh, like we talk about brain food is broccoli, the sulforaphane in broccoli mm-hmm. is a powerful antioxidant, especially if you sprout those, those broccoli uh, seeds. And, um, but if you're not getting it, you get supplement in that. Um, one of the most popular obviously is, uh, caffeine, but if you add caffeine with um, L-theanine, as it's found naturally, um, I'm drinking some some green tea here mm-hmm. on, on camera, and it it's allows you, for me, I'm very sensitive to caffeine. Um, I have to be very careful, but especially with my sleep, and I, sometimes I get jitters, but if I add a little bit of L-theanine, it kind of mitigates and mm-hmm. helps me to be able to relax um, while I still have energy. And um, probably one of the most, ones I'm most excited about, I don't do these, you know, most of these every day, certainly not, but, um, creatine. So creatine is, is something that's very popular in the fitness and exercise mm-hmm. arena. And, but it's so, it's so many research studies, specifically human studies on creatine for, uh, for mental energy and, and, and cognitive energy and vitality. And so that's something that people could look into also as well. But in, in the book, we put uh, three dozen well-researched human studies that people could look into. And I, again, I recommend you talk to a health practitioner or functional medicine doctor, do, do the tests that are, you know, but if you're not getting red meat uh, or, uh, you know, certain meats like high in creatine, you might want to be able to supplement in it also as well. And so a lot of options here. And again, I go through this just to give people choice because mm. I feel like if people have choice, so they have power. Mm. And they could do something that's that's good. Like the uh, Bacopa is a, it's an Ayurvedic medicine, and it helps pr- improve cognition and, and memory. Uh, rhodiola mm-hmm. is a Scandinavian herb that people could look into that helps reduce mental fatigue and improves cognitive function. So, in in here we talk about a bunch. Even like um, we talked about last time, turmeric yeah. as being a brain food, mm-hmm. of lower inflammation, and it's the the active ingredient there is is curcumin. Right, and it has uh, potent anti-inflammatory, antioxidant benefits. It potentially could cross the blood-brain barrier, and has been shown to lead improvement in cognitive function, especially some of the studies uh, relating to patients with 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 Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, lion's mane, mushroom, a lot of different yeah. uh, ner- has neuroprotective effects. Ginkgo biloba, which is used a lot in uh, in Chinese medicine, it increases uh, blood flow, and a lot of our brain health is. Uh, you know, how I overcame a lot of my TBIs was, was through things like hyperbaric chamber, mm. you know, where it helps to, to uh, push uh, oxygen yeah. and blood flow, you know, into the areas that were maybe uh, damaged and not getting that kind of, uh, kind of nutrient and, and, and nourishment. Oh, this is brilliant. It's a great <laughs> summary of, um, of, of so much important, overwhelming knowledge out that is out there, books and things on what to, so how to supplement and how to, what is yeah. a nootropic and, you know, what should we do for our brain? And, and I'm, I'm very pleased how you've emphasized, you know, get with a functional medicine doctor who can actually do yes. the test. So just to be careful of not mm-hmm. just, oh, I think that's great. I'll have that for my brain. You, know, you can take a whole bunch of yes. stuff and they can be counter, mm-hmm. countering each other and making things worse. So, Great so. advice to get your functional medicine doctor. But if you don't know what to ask, at least, or if you don't always know, you've got that as a resource. So what a great extension of an already excellent book. So Jim, thank you so much for what you've done you. again. And it's just such great, everything you do is just so wonderful. And I'm so glad that we know each other and that we do things together. And, you know, and I'm looking forward yes. to our next conversation. I always look forward to our next conversation. And one day 
maybe yeah. doing something live together. We've done a, we've done a, um, on my, in fact, if people go back and look in my lives, there's, there's actually, we did a live together at a con- Dave Asprey's conference last yeah. year, which people can go. Oh yeah. So I've had the, you know, the grace and the blessings to be able to to share stage with you and any opportunity to collaborate. Yes. You know, I know our, our fans and our followers, our community love your work. And I'm looking forward to having you back on our show also as well. And, uh-huh. and you know, sharing your, your latest and, and greatest, because I know, you know, as a, as a dolphin, you're always creating and coming in and making new distinctions and you're very full of purpose. So I really respect not only what you do, but, but why you do it and the manner in which you do it. And I feel like now you, you change your mind, you change your brain, you change your life and you change the world. Right. Yeah. And I think now more than ever, it's so important. So many people are shrinking mm. what's possible to fit their minds yeah. as opposed to, hey, how do I expand my mind to fit all that's really possible? And that that's why I wrote this book as a kind of a one place people could start uh, where where it's it's very, you know, every page has something, one small, simple step, because I believe inch by inch, it's a sin, oh, yeah. yard by yard, it's too hard. Exactly, I love a this. Little by little, a little becomes, a little, yeah, becomes a whole lot. And and it's just giving people an options because I truly believe someone who's listening right now that there's a version of yourself that's patiently waiting. And the goal is we show up every single day for ourselves and we study and we learn and we give until we're introduced to that that person. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really excited for, I'm very optimistic for our community as we grow and, and, you know, as transformation artists that are listening right now, that we all play a role in leaning into our strengths and our brain animals and our tools and resources and podcasts like yourself and your work to be able to make uh, positive change. Oh, that's beautifully said. I so agree with you. I feel like we, in, we definitely have reached a sort of point in history where people are are really wanting to change and grow and expand. And, you know, it's gone through, yeah. see, history always goes through cycles. And we're in a very exciting time now where things are, we can either be very negative or we can really look at what yeah. people like yourselves are doing, you know, what you're doing, what we're doing. There's so much incredible incredible hope out there. And you verbalize that. Yeah. And, and, and just one small, simple step. Yeah. So I would love for people to be, you know, so people, um, we're donating all the proceeds to the book like we did last time to build schools in Ghana, Guatemala, Incredible. Kenya, um, Alzheimer's research for women. You know, you know, women are twice as likely to experience Alzheimer's than men, yet most of the research is done on with with men and treatments on men and um, in memory of my grandmother. And so people can get it at limitlessbook.com or wherever books are sold and and I'm curious though, mybrainanimal.com is to post your animal online and tag both of us there so we get to see it. And I'm, I'm curious to see what the dominant animal traits are in, in this community. And either either way, I just really, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the possibilities to be on this journey with you. Thank you. To reveal and realize all of our, our potential. Oh, thank you. That's so beautifully said. Thank you, Jim. I couldn't have said that better. And thank you so much for being on my show. And I can't wait to have you back again. And I'm very excited to see what this is going, how this is going to impact the world with the work that you're doing. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you.